Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, it's indeed a great pleasure for me uh, to once again discuss an important knowledge area of the project management. But before we start the lecture of the day, I would like to recite a few verses from the Holy Quran. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna hatwayna kal kawsar bisfalli li rabbika man harin nashani ka wala tars laqalla wa lazim. My very dear friends, colleagues, students, learners with me, peers, mentors, teachers, supporters. It's indeed a great honor for me to continue with this series of lectures through my channel with the main objective to share my very limited knowledge with the students at one side. And on the other side or other hand, to get the feedback that from the <laughs> learned reviewers and viewers that how can we improve further the quality of our videos and the contributions we are having in this channel. So today we will discuss a very important knowledge area, <clears throat> which is quality management or project quality management. And we, as we discussed in the first lecture, that the four core areas are the four core knowledge areas of the projects are cost management, time management, scope management, and quality. So the four fundamental constraints of the projects are normally time, cost, quality, and scope. And sometimes the quality and scope <coughs> is combined together and we say that the triple constraints on the project are always CST, which is cost, schedule, and technical performance of quality and scope. So today we will discuss uh, this very important area. And uh, I hope that uh, we will be discussing some very important topics on the quality assurance. Okay, so the quality uh, are basically uh, the quality is uh, an abstract uh, measure that is not very easy to measure the quality in a quantitative form because it's all always subjective, it is always abstract, it is always uh, relative, and uh, certainly uh, the people may have different measures of the quality. So, uh, but however, the quality is defined in many ways. For example, uh, if the features of a product or service are, are, for, are required, which are required by the customer, uh, they may be the quality. So if a, a project is uh, having all the attributes and qualities which a, a customer can expect from the service or product, that can be a quality product or service. Uh, the product uh, depends on availability that uh, when I need it, it must be delivered. So a good, good quality can also depend on the availability and deliverability. The rel reliability that the quality would not function only for the first time, but it would function for every time. And that is the reliability that once I have the trust in the quality of a product or service, uh, this will be certainly exhibited by the quality of the product and service time and again. And then uh, the responsibilities, uh, the reasonable flexibility by the supplier that, uh, that will be available in different uh, time frame and in different flexible modules. So we have different uh, definitions. For example, the competence 
is one of the uh, fundamental definition of the quality that uh, with the necessary skills and knowledge exists to perform the services then we can call it the uh, quality of services so that would uh, mean the uh, competence uh, the communication is another attribute that for example uh, uh, how can i easily contact the supplier uh, when i need that particular uh, product the credibility uh, the confidence which the uh, customer would have in the products and the security uh, that the systems so these are some of the attributes of the quality and the quality is defined in many ways now the quality is important uh, because quality brings value to the organizations in terms of the customer loyalty, customer retention, uh, the positive image of the organization, in the, the community, in the stakeholders, the uh, value addition to the firm, and then you have a consistent uh, returns and profitability of the organization. So many, in many ways, the quality is very important. Uh, and again, the competition brings uh, uh, definitely, uh, the quality would help you to uh, sustain the competition in a highly competitive market. Uh, so if you just see uh, the uh, quality improves the perceived image, we discussed that the image of the firm is uh, enhanced. Uh, it should result in higher sale volume and higher profitability, certainly, and then uh, it uh, result into lower cost uh, if we are having larger volume of production and uh, the uh, increase in sale volume would lead us to the uh, economies of scale and then for the uh, per unit cost would decrease. Higher quality in manufacturing should result in lower waste. So if we have uh, a higher quality, then the, uh, the percent of the waste and the redoing and the rejection would reduce and ultimately we'll, we'll, uh, we will reduce the cost of production. Uh, similarly, when we have a good quality, the customer complaints would also reduce and the warranty claims and the claims of the uh, defect liability and other things that would reduce. And uh, this also uh, uh, lead to the shorter processing time because if the uh, processing is quality oriented and we believe that all the processes have been deployed with quality, then definitely we will not have the uh, stoppages in the system. We will not have the turn downs. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, the production cycle will be uh, minimized uh, with no uh, breakdowns and with no stoppages and delays for the imperfect work. Now, uh, there is always a quality a cost that quality would definitely bring some cost. And uh, if we are not, uh, fulfilling the quality, then again, we have to uh, put some additional cost. Uh, the effectiveness of the corporate overheads in British business by Devlin and Partners, Devlin and Partners estimate that the average cost of waste and mistakes in the UK represent 20% of controllable corporate overheads. One of the uh, student, uh, Dr. Shahid, has been working uh, with the, in the case uh, uh, that how the cost of doing imperfect and substandard work in the construction industry and unfortunately there is a big wastage of uh, time and resources in the construction industry due to the poor quality and this may go even uh, to as high as 20 to 25 percent in some projects so the uh, cost of bad quality is always very high to the contractors and to the firms but unfortunately uh, they are not, neither documented nor the, uh, the contractors are well aware of these facts. This includes the cost of ensuring and assure, uh, assuring the uh, quality as well as the loss incurred when the quality is not achieved. So we have the rejection, uh, the redoing, uh, and the uh, uh, waste of material is normally uh, some of the uh, cost associated with, the, uh, with achieving not the quality. And uh, the Cost of quality can also be classified in the prevention cost, appraisal cost, internal failure cost, and external failure cost. So uh, the, uh, the cost of quality is sometimes very high if the quality is not achieved. And that's why the good firms would always focus on the uh, quality assurance and quality controls. 
Now, uh, we will discuss this later, but uh, just that uh, once we have uh, developed the plan and we uh, try to assure uh, that the quality is achieved during the currency of the project, then there is a system in which we can control the deviation from the standard procedures and standard uh, quality uh, attributes. Now the uh, quality is uh, fitness to use. Uh, uh, one of the guru in the quality assurance and quality control, Joseph Juran, uh, the father, one of the fathers of the modern uh, total quality management. Quality is conformance to the requirements. That is Crosby, and again, very famous quality guru. Uh, the quality of a product or service is its ability to satisfy the needs and expectation of the customers. This is another way of uh, defining the quality. Uh, there are some examples that how the international organizations have defined their quality. For example, the FedEx, which is an international courier, uh, a world-renowned courier for having very large volume of uh, business across the world. And they said that performance to the standard expected by the customers. The general service of the United States uh, meeting the customer's need the first time in every time. So the reliability, Boeing, for example, providing customers with products and services that consistently meet their needs and expectations. So this is consistency, that uh, reliability and consistency. At the, union, the U.S. Department of Defense doing the right thing for the first time in every time. Do the right thing right the first time and always First time, always striving for the improvement and always satisfying the customer. Quality can be defined in terms of the agent who is the judge of the quality. So this is again uh, uh, a highly subjective uh, uh, matter and a subjective uh, question that who would judge the quality, whether the user or the producer, manufacturer, the contractor, the client, or a third party. So this is, uh, we will discuss some of the tools for quality assurance and quality control. So quality uh, is involved in meeting or exceeding the customer expectations, applies to the products, services, people, processes, and environments. Quality is, a, is an ever-changing status. So quality today may not be good enough to be considered quality tomorrow. So the quality uh, is, uh, in, uh, uh, is always in a journey. It cannot be said that the quality has been achieved You always uh, try to enhance the quality standards and new standards of quality are uh, developed by the human beings and they are keeping uh, improving their qualities. Uh, the six basic concepts of the uh, total quality management uh, that are commitment and involvement, uh, an unwavering focus on the customer, effective involvement uh, of the entire workforce, the continuous improvement treating suppliers as a partner and establishing a performance measures for processes. Now the total quality approach, uh, which uh, I will explain in a next slide, uh, that uh, we started basically initially when the quality uh, uh, concept came in uh, 60s or 70s in the last century, in the, in the, in the 20th century, uh, most of the quality was based on the inspection and there were quality inspectors who used to inspect the uh, quality of products and services. And they were, uh, for example, salvaging, inserting, grading, blending, corrective actions, and it defies source of non-conformance. So this was more uh, visual inspections where the inspectors used to conduct the quality audits uh, during the currency of the production or manufacturing or sometime at the end of the assembly line. Then uh, the concept of quality control came in which the quality manuals were discussed, the process performance data and uh, inspections, product testing, product quality planning, use of basic statistics and paperwork uh, control system were developed to see that the uh, quality is achieved. Then we had the quality assurance. This was uh, the concept that it is not only at the end of the assembly line, the quality uh, can be checked, but we can assure that when we are doing our job and we are uh, executing the project, we should, or the manufacturing, we should uh, have a system to assure that the quality is achieved. 
And for that, we have the advanced quality planning, quality manuals. There were some uh, non-production operations, the failure analysis, the statistical uh, tools uh, for quality assurance, uh, statistical process controls. And then we went to the total quality management, which was the deployment of a comprehensive system in which the uh, quality can be ensured in the, all the attributes of uh, an organization. Uh, and this was already a very comprehensive approach, which involved the supplier, the customer, the operations, everything in the organization was placed in the total quality management. Uh, the most famous uh, BIMing cycle, uh, which was uh, uh, initially developed by uh, Deming, and it mainly uh, gave us the fundamental principle of the continuous quality improvement, uh, which is plain to check and act and that first of all, uh, when you are doing something uh, or a product or service, you have to plan uh, and predict the effect of this change will have on the plane, how the effects will be measured. So if there is any improvement you can suggest in the existing process or in the existing production line, you can think and you can predict that uh, change uh, in the system and then you implement that by doing and see that uh, how on a small change uh, it can bring some uh, desired uh, improvements and then you keep on checking the uh, changes to see that if uh, the the effect of this change is positive and there is uh, as per the plane and then you adopt the change as a permanent modification uh, on a comprehensive line. So uh, uh, starting from a very small uh, scale change, you want to see uh, the results. And then once you are getting the results, then you certainly implement that change on a broader uh, or a larger scale. The uh, 14 very famous uh, uh, points of the uh, dimming, uh, who developed this dimming cycle, uh, are plain to uh, uh, check and act uh, create const constancy of purpose towards improvement. So there should be a constant uh, purpose by the uh, senior management towards improvement of the quality. Adopt the new philosophy, we can no longer live with commonly accepted level of delays, mistakes, defective workmanship. So this was the second uh, rationale. It is cease dependence on mass inspection require instead statistical evidence. So the statistical uh, process control and statistical assessment were introduced and the, the practice of awarding business on the basis of price stake. So it's not only the price stake which is important, that is the more important now, even the PEPRA has advised us to go for the life cycle costing, that you should not go only for the lowest cost, but at the same time, you should also see the price, price uh, of the life cycle of the project or the product, and you should involve all the uh, operational uh, cost, uh, the uh, development, operational implementation, training, and uh, of the and then, uh, upgradation and maintenance. So uh, the entire life cycle cost should be uh, based uh, for the decision making instead of the uh, price tag. The fifth was the uh, find the problems. Uh, so the, uh, the management should work continuously in the system uh, to detect the problems, institute modern methods of training. So on job training to the employees, institute modern method of supervision uh, production workers, the responsibility of foreman must be changed from numbers to quality. So it's not only the number is very important, but at the same time, we have to improve the quality and the foreman and the supervisor should also be held responsible for uh, uh, good quality delivery of the products. Drive out fear that everyone may work effectively for the company. So the fear in the organization uh, and the employees should be driven out and there should be a confidence uh, within the organization, within the team, so that they can rely on the quality. Uh, then uh, break down the barriers between departments because now the departments are working, overlapping, and they uh, share the responsibilities. So the, the, uh, the, the barriers must be uh, phased out. Eliminate numerical goals, poster and slogans for the workforce asking for new level of productivity without providing methods. So not only the productivity uh, should be enhanced, but uh, there must be the methods to enhance the productivities. Eliminate the work standard that describe numerical quotas. So don't uh, believe in the numerical quotas, rather go for the generic uh, way of the quality assurance. 
and then remove barrier that stand between the hourly worker and his right to pride of workmanship. So uh, the barrier, uh, normally the hourly workers are having very uh, less uh, ownership in the organization. So therefore they must be in place and all the quality standard and quality training should be given to them. Institute a rigorous program of education and training. Uh, it's very important to have a rigorous training of the employees at all level for the quality assurance, quality control. And then finally, there must be a structured top management that will push the 13 points every day. So this was the Deming uh, 14 very famous points. So if we uh, go to the cost of quality, we discussed that uh, again, the uh, Joseph Gibran, uh, that there are two costs. One is the unavoidable cost, for example, preventing defects, inspection, sampling, certain quality control, avoidable costs like defects, uh, and product failures, scrap material, labor of rework, complaint processing, losses from the unhappy customer, and so on. So we can uh, have two kinds of uh, cost, what is unavoidable and the other is avoidable. Uh, the Toro quality management uh, normally have six or seven very strong attributes. Uh, there, there must be a patient to deliver customer value and excellence. And uh, this should be based on the management by fact. There must be a strong concern for the employee involvement and development. Uh, there must be an organization responsibility. There should be a partnership perspective, both internal and external. There should be a process management. There should be a very uh, implementation in a true sense. There must be result focus uh, management and then this continuous quality improvement must be driven by the customer. Now, this is just telling us uh, one of the very old data, but uh, that how the quality has increased the uh, uh, share of the market share of different organization. You see that in this particular case, the market share of the Motorola has increased by 373% the stock growth. So this just giving you uh, the the value which uh, has been increased, uh, uh, the uh, the growth of uh, stock uh, in the uh, renowned organization, and you, you can see in the, some of the organization which are highly quality oriented, they have a very high uh, the uh, the uh, stock stock uh, growth rates. On the project quality management, uh, coming to the point. That is basically uh, the processes which we normally uh, implement in the project to ensure that the uh, quality policies and quality objectives and responsibilities so that the project will satisfy the need for which it has been undertaken. So all the processes which we normally uh, apply, formulate and apply during the currency of project to ensure that the project is delivered at the desired level of quality and technical performance is very important. So it implements the quality management system to the policy procedure and processes of quality planning, quality assuring, and quality control. So three very important tools, uh, which we normally do in the quality uh, management is the quality planning, quality assurance, and quality control uh, with the uh, aim of continuous quality improvement. Now the uh, three very important uh, parts of this quality management are project quality management is quality planning. The second is quality assurance. And the third one is quality control. Uh, the quality planning is basically uh, uh, the first and the very important part in which we establish the standards for the quality. And remember that if we have not established the uh, very uh, internationally recognized and internationally reputed standards, then definitely quality cannot be ensured. So it's very important that first of all, that you plan the quality in terms of the standard which are acceptable and which would define the benchmark for the quality. And then uh, the documentation and all the relevant uh, uh, rules and responsibilities for achieving the quality is then developed in the quality planning. And then once the uh, project is started, we try to see that uh, assure and ensure that the uh, quality standards for different deliverables have, which have been established in the planning uh, are achieved through a rigorous quality assurance process. And then if there is any uh, 
deviation from the established standards, then definitely we would go for the uh, quality control uh, uh, to see that if there is any corrective actions required, we can take such kind of actions in a very timely manner. Now, uh, since uh, we always believe that uh, there are very common uh, commonalities between the total quality management and the project management, and at least five uh, things uh, make these, uh, or four or five things make these two to, uh, to, to ensure. That we, first of all, for example, in both the uh, cases, we have the customer as the uh, top priority. In the project quality management, as well as the total quality management, uh, we uh, believe that customer satisfaction, understanding, evaluating, defining, and managing expectations of the customer so that customer requirements are met. So this is uh, important both for the TQM process and for the project management. And this requires a combination of the conformance to the requirements uh, to the project must produce what it said would produce and fitness to, for use the product and service may satisfy real needs. The second uh, philosophy uh, of the TQM is prevention, not uh, uh, prevention or inspection, that instead of rejection, we should go for the prevention and we should deploy the system which can prevent the imperfect and non-quality work and uh, without wasting the time and money. And that is one of the uh, basic objective of the project quality management as well, that we would try to prevent the mistakes in the, uh, at the time of execution rather, in, rather than to reject and redo the things uh, after rejection, which normally leads to a uh, uh, wastage of time and money. And the third one is that the management responsibility uh, is very important from top to the, uh, bottom in all uh, levels of management, the executive, the senior management, and all managers have a very strong responsibility to achieve the quality. So therefore, participation in the quality assurance is very, very important at all levels. And finally, uh, both the TQM and the project quality management believes in the continuous improvement of the uh, quality. It is not a static identity, rather uh, the quality keep on improving and we try to see that the uh, standards are improved with time and uh, we bring the new standards of quality with time. Uh, the quality planning, uh, we are doing uh, different kinds of uh, uh, tools we are using that how can we uh, see that the quality of a particular level or a particular standard we, uh, we normally uh, adopt for the quality planning. So the first and the most important thing is the cost benefit analysis that uh, we try to see that, uh, for example, for different level of quality, uh, we may increase some cost, but the benefits of this increase in cost or good quality would be uh, many times more than the uh, quality additional cost. So therefore, we try to see that any uh, quality standard which we can adopt for a particular product or service is then measured in terms of the benefits we can have. So uh, the quality planning must consider cost-benefit trade-offs. The primary benefit of meeting quality requirements is less work, which means higher productivity, lower cost, and increased stakeholders. So therefore, uh, the uh, quality uh, cost and benefit analysis tells us that uh, the additional cost which we put into the quality brings more benefits. The benchmarking is another way of planning in which we can establish a quality standard of the existing industry, industry best quality standard, and we can compare our quality with those established standards. Now, uh, this is normally done uh, uh, for those organizations which are new in the field or which don't have enough experience and they cannot have their own quality standards. So in this case, uh, they can, uh, um, other uh, projects, uh, quality can be then made as a, base, as a benchmark. Uh, the design of experiment uh, is a statistical method that helps identity with uh, which factors may influence specifically variables of products or process under development or in production. Now, this is uh, done through uh, different kind of, uh, of iterations and simulations, and we want to see that what particular uh, factor would lead to better quality with the help of modeling and with the help of experiment and with the help of simulation and modeling. Uh, the cost of quality. Uh, that uh, the total quality cost uh, incurred by investing in preventing non-conformance to requirements and appraising the product and service for conformance to requirements and failing to meet the requirements 
the river. So there are three uh, types of cost which we normally, uh, the first we have to invest money in uh, preventing the non-conformance in terms of uh, more, uh, uh, better standard, better quality assurance, and uh, better education and training. And the second is appraising the product or service for conformance. That is that once we have developed the quality assurance standard, then definitely we will also appraise the quality. And finally, uh, the cost of, uh, of uh, non-conformance, that in case uh, there is uh, not a quality achieved, then definitely we have to pay for this uh, non-quality uh, or non-conformance. So uh, we normally in this quality plan, uh, we have the uh, quality management plan, which is a, a robust document which tells the basic quality statement, the quality standards, uh, the quality assurance and quality control standards. And then uh, we can also have some quality metrics in this plan in which we can uh, uh, develop the different metrics and measurement techniques for the quality the standards and the uh, acceptance of the quality. We can have some checklist of quality uh, in the planning, uh, quality planning and against these checklists, sometimes we check the attributes of the products and services and then we said, see the quality uh, achievement. Then there might be some quality baseline, uh, which is uh, already in the record and we want to uh, achieve the quality of that baseline at least. So there might be some well-established specification which already exists for the quality and we may follow these baseline specification of quality for the execution of project. And based on all these uh, uh, inputs uh, in which we define all these uh, factors, then we uh, also revise the quality, uh, the project management plan, which is updated uh, based on these uh, uh, new uh, things we incorporate with the project quality management plan. The next step, which is really very important, is the quality uh, assurance. Uh, that once we have developed the quality planes and the matrices and the testing methods, and uh, then uh, we have all the benchmarks and quality standard specifications. The next very important step is to ensure that the quality uh, standards are achieved during the currency of the project. Uh, and uh, there must be a, a well uh, placed processes which can check the quality. Uh, continuous processes improvement provides an iterative means of improving the quality of all processes. So the quality improvement uh, is an iterative process and it keep on, uh, uh, it continues uh, uh, with the aim to uh, consistently and continuously improve the quality standards. Continuous process improvement reduces waste and non value edit activities which allows processes to operate it increased level of efficiency and effectiveness. So if there is a good quality and the quality assurance is very robust and strong, then definitely we will not be wasting our time and money in the, uh, in the wastage and the uh, imperfect and non-quality uh, works. And that would lead to the more productivity and efficiency of the system. Uh, so we have uh, the inputs, the tools, and the outputs we will discuss uh, in subsequent. Now the tools and techniques which we are uh, using for the quality assurance, uh, the quality planning tools and techniques, for example, the quality audits. Now the quality audit uh, can be done by internal organization or some, uh, some kind of, uh, sometimes this quality audit is done by the quality auditors. A quality audit is a structured independent review of, to determine whether the project activities comply with the organization project policy process and procedures. Uh, so there must be an independent quality assurance department. And normally this department is uh, not influenced by the internal organization. Even sometimes they are coming from the outside, from third party. The objective of the quality audit is to identify inefficient and ineffective policies, processes and procedures in use of the project, which can lead to the non-conformance. The quality audit may be scheduled at random or it may be carried out by a properly trained in-house auditors. So there may be uh, in-house in quality auditors or we can even uh, get the services of the third party, uh, third party quality auditors, uh, which are approved by the government, are approved by the international organizations. Another uh, way of the quality assurance is to analyze the process, the production process, or the, uh, the, the, the process of doing a particular task 
and based on that uh, we can analyze the entire process flow chart and see that what where are the problems and we can then detect these problems to solve the problems so based on the uh, on these in, uh, uh, tools which we deploy uh, in the quality assurance we either can have some requested changes that uh, taking uh, actions to increase the effectiveness that once you do the quality audits you may try to uh, giving you giving uh, your feedback to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of the policy in the form of a quality audit reports and uh, uh, there may be some recommended uh, corrective actions uh, it may be uh, become the pro part of the organization process assets uh, which are uh, once uh, you uh, provide them the documentation that become also in part of the organization assets and uh, the, the third and the most important uh, step is the performing the quality control that uh, once the quality uh, standards have been assured and uh, we try to consistently monitor the project results uh, somewhere uh, at the end of the project uh, or a project life cycle phase uh, or sub phase so we try to identify that if there is any unsatisfactory results uh, we try to identify their causes and we try to take the corrective actions uh, right in time uh, because even if the 100 percent quality assurance is done still we can have some uh, quality problems at the end and uh, we need to have a uh, corrective actions so uh, it is normally done by the quality control department or similar organizational unit the project management team should have a working knowledge of the statistical quality control especially sampling and probability to help evaluate the quality control outputs. Among other subjects, the team may find it useful to know the difference between the following, uh, for example, prevention. Prevention is uh, keeping error out of the process and inspection, keeping error out of the hands of customer. So these are two different levels, prevention at the process level and it's inspection at the uh, product delivery level. So, so before it is reaching the uh, hands of the uh, customer, it should be properly inspected for any non-conformance. Attribute sampling, that is the uh, uh, not variable sampling. The result, uh, the, the result conforms and it does not, or it does not, so it's an attribute sample. And variable sampling is the result is rated on a continuous scale that measures the degree of conformity. So there can be two level of uh, sampling uh, sampling analysis, special causes, which has unusual causes and common causes are the normal causes. So special causes uh, are very important to detect. Common causes are also called random causes and uh, uh, they can happen anytime uh, during the organization, uh, during the project. Tolerance are the result is acceptable and falls within the range of specified by the tolerance and the control limit. For example, the standard value is 100 then there might be a tolerance of 5% plus minus, which would mean that the value of 105 and 95 both will also be acceptable. So the tolerance give us the, uh, the cushion uh, above and below the uh, standard specification, uh, uh, which, which can be accepted without uh, rejecting or non-conforming. Uh, these are some of the tools uh, which we uh, use for the quality control that once we see some non-conformance or problem, we try to see the roots of these problems. And one of the uh, very famous uh, diagram, we call it cause and effect diagram. And it is also called the fishbone diagram or Ishikawa diagram. Uh, uh, if you look at this, uh, uh, this uh, figure, it shows that, uh, for example, uh, the major defect may come from the material, from the method, from the machine, time, energy, measurement, personnel, and environment. And then we can further open the material, for example, what can be the defects in the material and so on. So in this way, we can uh, see the relationship of different, uh, between different inputs or factors which can lead to the, uh, to the, uh, the major defects. Another uh, very commonly used tool is the control chart in which we can uh, see that if the, uh, that how the, uh, the production line are the finally uh, uh, 
uh, delivered project uh, product is lying uh, within the acceptable level so the control chart shows us that some of the uh, the of uh, the products may have the value above and some below and then we say okay there is an acceptable tolerance uh, maybe plus minus three sigma which is standard deviation and maybe plus minus 10 percent uh, so you can uh, based on that and i can give the example for example the standard weight of the steel uh, is uh, given in the code but there is always a tolerance of plus minus five percent in the steel uh, bars weight of the steel bars because it may not be possible all the time to have the standard weights so for this you can see the control chart and you see that what is the tolerance and how can it be uh, used this is uh, showing you the control chart and the x prime is the standard value uh, but you can see that the production plan can tell you that some of the products are above and below and the thick lines uh, above the x bar are the upper cut control limit and uh, the lower control limit so any any product which is beyond this control limit is then rejected and uh, it is not passed on to the uh, customer so this is a typical inspection uh, tool in which we try to see that the uh, product or the process is within the uh, tolerable limits and the upper and lower uh, limits are defined uh, we have the flow charts also uh, used to see that uh, to detect any delays or in this perfection so normally uh, for the process flow charting uh, we try to see the different steps and different decisions and different delays if there are any and we try to identify the problems where the decisions are delayed or where the uh, quality uh, is compromised this is telling us a standard uh, flow chart. For example, the project request is coming, the compliance copy, then we, the artwork is developed, and then the artwork is improved, approved. If it is not approved, then it goes to the development uh, section. And if it is approved, then it goes to the uh, change in the control uh, specification. The artwork uh, proof is done, then the vendor make proofs, and uh, then uh, if you can see the package development review approved if it is not approved then uh, again it goes back to the vendor and if it is approved then it goes to the quality assurance review approval and if it is approved here then it goes to the uh, proof back to the vendor and then the specs are signed in the package and quality assurance and the material is ordered so this is just telling us a, a process flow chart uh, which is involved in the quality assurance of uh, a particular artwork, uh, the printing work, and uh, all the steps in the printing and design work has been given in this, and we try to see and follow this uh, flow chart. Uh, there are histograms uh, which uh, are just telling us the uh, bar chart, the distribution of various variables, and each column represents uh, a tribute of a characteristic of a problem situation and uh, the height of each column represents the relative frequencies. For example, if you see a look at this particular, uh, for example, there might be improper rotation, there might be rise, a noise, a wobble, wobbling, pressure, excel cocking, case wobble, wobblers, other. And uh, based on this, you can see that the highest uh, uh, frequency is coming from the improper rotation in the system. And uh, based on that, we can then decide that which is the biggest uh, source of problem and we need to identify and fix that. There is another uh, technique we are uh, run charts are just like uh, uh, flow charts uh, are uh, bar charts uh, in which uh, the history and pattern of variations uh, this is more like uh, we discussed in the previous slides uh, for example if we just uh, look at this these are control charts so control charts are run charts are more or less the same and we try to see the graph which shows the points plotted in the order in which they occur run charts show trends in the process over time variations over time and decline or improvement in the process over time trend analysis is performed using run chart so uh, based on the uh, run chart we then can see the trend if for example there is a consistent uh, the run chart showing is uh, that the uh, uh, the, the production is going uh, consistently below the standards 
uh, even if it is within the allowable uh, tolerance, uh, the, cons uh, the it, there is there is a tendency, and we have to fix that. So it's very important to analyze the run charts uh, in the historical data to see that what can be the problem in the production line. There is uh, another tool which we scatter diagram or scattergram, in which uh, we plot the uh, the values of actual uh, performance, and uh, then we see that how these uh, these uh, values are falling around the standard curve, and uh, we try to see the uh, the, uh, the distribution of the scatter, and ideally the scatter should be balanced above and below the standard line. Otherwise, if it is uh, too much above and the cluster is much above it, the upper line, then definitely there must be some problem. And uh, if this is balanced, that some of the values are falling on the uh, below the uh, scatter diagram, and some are uh, the uh, most uh, half of the values are most uh, almost half of the values are falling above the standard curve, then we can call it a balanced uh, scatter in the system. So uh, this tool also allows us to uh, study the uh, possible relationship between change observed in two variables, that is dependent and uh, independent variable. Uh, the closer the points uh, are to the diagonal line, the more close they are related. So if the scatter diagram is more close to the uh, standard diagonal line, then definitely we can see that the, uh, the production is more controlled. The statistical sampling is another way because we may not be able to check the quality of each and every attribute in each and every product and service. Therefore, we may go for random sampling and the number of sampling would depend on the, uh, on the uh, probability of the uh, our variance and uh, certainly on the volume of production. So statistical sampling, choosing part of the population of interest uh, for inspection. So uh, for example, if we have, uh, 1,000 engineering drawings, we may not be able to check each and every drawing, so we may pick 10% or 5% randomly from the 100 drawings to see the quality of uh, drawing and drafting. Appropriate sampling can often reduce the cost of quality control. There is a substantial body of knowledge on such. So there are many statistical uh, methods and tools, and for different kinds of study, we are using different kinds of uh, statistical methods. Inspection uh, is another, uh, we discussed that the inspection is normally done uh, before uh, the product or service is delivered to the uh, customer or it reaches to the hands of the customer. Uh, so in this particular case, certainly we would try to see that all the attributes or products are tested and uh, the results of an inspection include measurement. Inspection can be conducted at any level. For example, the result of a single activity can be inspected or the final product can be Inspected. Inspections are also called reviews, peer reviews, audits, and walkthroughs. In some pro uh, application areas, these terms have narrow uh, and specific meaning. Inspections are also used to validate the defective pairs. So, if there are, uh, have been some defects in the system or in the project or in the work which has been previously uh, identified by the project audit, uh, the inspection uh, is required once this defect is, uh, is corrected and rectified by the uh, uh, by the, uh, the contractors are the execution team. So uh, uh, there is always a process through which we uh, try to defect, uh, repair the defect reviews uh, uh, because once the defects are pointed out at different levels of the project during the uh, project life cycle, it is documented and communicated to the contractor and to the uh, manufacturing department and then there is a, a proper process in which we try to review these defect repairs. This is very important because I have seen that in many cases, the defects are pointed out very professionally, but unfortunately the, uh, the team, the project team is not taking care of the uh, rectifications of the, uh, of the defects in a very professional manner. So this uh, would require to have a very strong uh, defect repair system. Now the uh, quality uh, control may uh, have the defect repair. Uh, we, we, we can see the quality baseline, which can be updated. Uh, we can have the recommended actions, which are uh, corrective actions to, uh, to correct the, any, any defective work. Uh, it may include redoing, it may include uh, uh, the corrections. Uh, 
the prevention uh, uh, is uh, the uh, actions which we, we would recommend so that uh, this kind of uh, defect cannot appear again. Uh, there might be some requested changes in the quality standards or there might be some changes required when we are, uh, uh, we are uh, improving the quality. Uh, so there might be a defect uh, list uh, or check list is developed and that is recommended to the uh, department. And uh, once the uh, project, uh, this, uh, this uh, defects are completed, the checklist is also completed and we have the lesson learned document and these all together are then becoming the part of the organization process assets. Uh, there must be a validation process to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to approve the quality of deliverables. So we have uh, two types of very common inspection. One is provisional inspection and the other one is final inspection. The provisional inspection is normally done in the time of delivery and certain amount of the money is released. But once we are going for the final inspection, we need to have very uh, professional team to have the final inspection and final acceptable acceptance testing. And uh, once this is validated, then the final payment is released. Now the construction quality assurance is a complex and detailed process to guarantee that the finished facilities well to the standards uh, as desired by the owner and defined by the design document. No matter what type of quality assurances are taken, all of them start with specification. So you have to have a very well-defined and uh, very robust specification. And this specification should be current specification and consistent with the industry, best industry, industry practices. There are several types of specification used in the construction, for, for example, method and material specification, there are some recipe specification, end result and end product specification, performance based specification, guarantee or warranty specification for a specified time, and so on. For example, uh, the first specification in the construction would start from the material selection. We have uh, different specification for aggregates, for cement, for water, for mixing. In the method of doing the work, uh, for example, if you are doing the flooring work or you are doing the uh, the plastering work, the reinforced concrete work, there are some standard methods uh, which are already approved and you have to follow that. Then uh, we have some recipe specification. These are uh, for that kind of, uh, uh, I mean, um, um, uh, items of work, uh, we can have some recipes normally done for the uh, new kind of uh, work where the existing uh, methods are not available so we can then work out to have a recipe to the uh, contractor and we uh, tell him to do that, uh, the, that particular. For example, uh, in one of our projects, we uh, wanted to, to fix the uh, expanded metal on the vertical, uh, vertical uh, uh, giants between the column and the uh, logs. So we then develop a recipe or a standard procedures End result and end product specification. This again is normally done for the finished products in which we uh, normally try to see that the end product is having some testing. We execute some testing uh, and these testing uh, specification are already approved and we then uh, performance based specification that uh, normally for one year we see the performance of the various attributes of the project and we see that specification are met and then there are some warranty guarantees also uh, for the performance given by the manufacturers and the suppliers and normally this period is for one year uh, and within one year we uh, if there is any uh, any problem with the, with the quality uh, the uh, the product is either uh, repaired or replaced by the supplier uh, so uh, this is just telling us and we have already uh, done it, but these are the some of uh, the standard procedures that how we can improve the quality of construction. That we uh, we want to see the pre-construction constructability. That whether uh, the design which we have done can be applied in the same spirit in the at the site. Then lesson from other projects. Then education and training of the staff. If there are some research studies then uh, um, problems and potential solutions, analysis of field changes on the job training. And so, so these are some of the inputs which can improve the constructability and the quality of construction.
thank you very much this is the last slide and uh, this slide is telling us that quality is a journey this is not a destination we discussed this earlier that quality is a relative term and the continuous quality improvement which is the essence of the total quality management believes that the quality would improve the quality would not stand at one uh, place and uh, the standards would keep on improving with time and as more research and more uh, uh, new data comes we will try to improve the quality of the various attributes of the products and services so i think this was enough for today thank you very much uh, to be with us in the holy month of ramadan and uh, i think this lockdown period is a good uh, opportunity to uh, develop some good lectures for the students and for the uh, for the learners thank you very much and have a nice time uh, wassalam